Hello and welcome to the last nerdy video of 2024. Whilst I'm sure 2025 will bring us loads of new geek toys to play with, today instead I'm taking a tiny peek back into something I missed in 2024 called Depth Flow. It's a quick and easy image to video node for comfy UI which needs less than 4GB of VRAM and takes just a few seconds to run. Sounds good, then let's take a look at how you too can create animations like these at home for free. You won't be able to use this node without Comfy UI installed first, so do be sure to have that up and running. If you need more beginner's information, then check out the links in the video description. Over to installing the node then, and as pretty much is always the case, you can install this using the Custom Nodes Manager. Click on that up in the search box. You can search for Depth Flow, and here you can see it's Depth Flow Nodes. I've already got it installed, but you won't have, so you can click Install to do so. Remember to restart when prompted. You can also click on the title to take a look at the GitHub page, which we're going to see now. Here it is then, and they've got a great description. Turn your 2D images into stunning 2.5D parallax animations using depth flow in Comfy UI, which is an open source alternative to Immersity, if you've ever heard of or used that. Yes, parallax animations aren't anything new, but now they're nice and easy in Comfy UI, plus there are loads of custom controls too. The base node is where all the action happens and for a full breakdown of all the nodes and their parameters, they've even provided documentation. Certainly something I like to read and unfortunately all too often it's missing or incomplete, though not in this case. Like they say down here, the depth flow node takes an image or video and its corresponding depth map and applies various types of motion to generate a parallax effect. This node outputs a batch of images to be rendered as a video. As well as motions, there are also a couple of optional effects you can apply like they show here with depth of field and vignette. If you load up their example workflow, it looks something like this at the moment, though I have colored things in because such is my whim. Starting over on the left hand side is the input image. I don't already have a depth map for it, so I am generating one instead using this ControlNet preprocessor node. Remember the little tags at the top there say which custom node pack it's from and the small fox instead indicating it is built in. In this case, I'm using Depth Anything V2, but you could just use a depth map you already have or whatever other method you fancy to use to create them. As mentioned, effects are optional, but one thing you do need is a motion setting. The easiest way is to use one of the various presets, such as the motion preset dolly used here. Even the presets have a number of things you can change, and remember, all of these are in that documentation if you need more information, but for now, I'm just going to stick with the defaults. Okay, so once we have the image, its depth map, and the motion settings, all of those go into the main node the depth flow one. Again, this has a bunch of different settings you can change, and obviously, once you're good with how everything works, then is a good time to play with them. Things like FPS and frames should be pretty obvious, of course. Finally, then, the video is created and optionally saved if you want to. Now, how long do you reckon this 150 frame animation at 30 FPS will take to create? Ready? Well, let's see. Okay, so we are creating the depth map. That will, of course, take a few seconds. That's done. All right, now we've got the depth flow node going through. Oh, all right, and it's ready. Not bad, eh? Let's just take a little zoom in there so we can see our rodent sort of bouncing motion, but that's the default. It loops in and out. Awesome. With the basics covered, let's take a look at those various presets. A slightly more complicated looking workflow this time, but all we're adding here is a little bit of depth map manipulation and a switch for the various preset motions. Now we've got a whole bunch of them down here. So we've got circle, dolly, horizontal, orbital, vertical, and zoom. Now, before we take a quick look at those other motion presets, why would you want to expand or blur your depth map? Well, here I've duplicated the output so you can see the difference between the standard depth map and the one that has been slightly expanded with a blur applied. Okay, so if we zoom in and have a look at the first one, this is using the orbital motion. And as it goes round, if you take a look at the sort of edges here, 
and particularly this red bit, you can see, well, there's a sort of strange smear going on there, isn't it? Okay, all right, but now the one down here where we've done the expansion on the depth map and a little bit of blurring, it's not quite as bad. So particularly on that red bit at the top, there uh, seems a little bit more natural because we've expanded that area around and blurred it to make it not quite as depthy, then I think it looks a whole lot better. Anyway, back to the preset motions, and one we haven't seen yet is the circle. As this generates the depth map and goes through, can you guess what it's going to do? Yes, indeed, it does just go round and round. Quite a small motion to start with. You can zoom in so you can see that one. So there, we've got the motion circle. With horizontal, you get motion which goes, well, yes, you guessed it, horizontally. As for vertical, well, yes, that also works as the name suggests. And the last one we haven't seen yet is zoom. And well, there it is, zooming in. Certainly one of my favorites. Is that it? No, because these are just the presets and they have a whole lot more. In this example, I've added, well, all the other motion options. And the big thing here is that these ones also take motion inputs so you can chain them together making various different motions. Okay, very handy. So what have we got here? We've got arc, cosine, exponential, linear, set target, and sine. I've also set the tiling mode to none in this case, as the background is fairly plain, and added two more options to that switch, number seven and number eight. What do they do? Well, number seven, I'm taking the zoom as a sort of preset to start with, but then also setting the motion target. Here I've got the target zoom, zoom in there, so zoom and value 0 0.9. So when that starts its zoom motion, it actually starts out a little bit more zoomed in than normal. Okay, let's take a look at that one up here. So that is option six there. So that's the normal zoom. And then if I go over to number seven, so if we see where it starts, it's quite, quite zoomed out, but this should be just a little bit more zoomed in as it goes through, generates its thing. Does it start? Let, let's see, is it even obvious as it goes through? I love how quick this is. There we go. So yes, hopefully you can see it did start just a little bit more zoomed in. There you go. So his, his head is a lot closer to the top. One really easy way to tell. Okay, that's good. Now that is only a small change, but I don't really want it zooming into his chest like that because it, well, it looks a bit silly, doesn't it? So how can we fix something like that? Well, you have a number of options, but this linear motion example should be very easy to see in action as I set the target partway through to the upper part of the image. So this is option eight. So same as before, I'm starting with the zoom preset, setting the target, zooming out a little bit, but this time it should zoom up towards the top of the image. Now we get the zoom in and then, oh yep, yeah, we've got a nice linear shift up towards the head. So it's very obvious to see, that's why I picked the linear shift, but it does get us in the right place at the end. If you don't like the linear shift, no worries, because in this example, I've connected another one up, switch option nine, does much the same thing, but instead I'm using the depth flow motion arc. Now, when you run this one through, it's very similar, but because it's using an arc rather than that linear motion, you can see it's much, much smoother. Very nice indeed. Now you can do even more things, of course. Here, I have chained up what I've called a boop, which is lots of different things. So I'm starting off with the zoom. I'm setting the target. This time I'm zooming further out than usual. So 1.4, starting quite zoomed out. I've got another arc there, this time isometric and the same motion up towards the top of the image. And uh, well, let's see why I called this one a boop. That's option number 10. We'll cue this up, see what that set of motions comes out with. I quite like it personally. Let's see if you feel the same way. Here he is. Do we get our little boop? Come on, Rodent, we can do it. There he is. Whoa, look at that boop. That is some extreme nosage going on there. Zooms all the way back and whoa, extreme nosage. Love it. 
as you can hopefully see then there are loads of ways to create lots of different animations uh, and not all of them have to be quite as normal as this. Here I've just modified that previous boop uh, a little bit but the main change I've made is to the tiling mode which was set to none and now I've got it set to mirror. As you can see there when it starts out it looks like some really weird sort of fractal pattern zoom but eventually you can see it's just our rodent mirrored dude. Oh look at him, weird isn't it? That is such a strange zoom. Having a plain background works really well with a tiling mode of none like I've got set here for this nodding example. This allows for some quite extreme motions as the background doesn't look too weird uh, if it's all one colour. So now we've got this sort of strange nodding head and it really does get some depth in it, especially considering it's just a flat emoji style image. With so many options I'm sure everyone can have fun animating all sorts of different images. Nerdy rodent, he really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.